Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I put together the elven vest for my husband's Renfair outfit. I'm actually filming this intro uh, after we've already done everything for it, um, just because I forgot to do it before, so, you know. So let's jump right in and I'll show you the whole process. Okay, so I'm starting on the vest today. Um, I have got my fabric here, uh, which is a, I know it's black, it's actually just a dark gray cotton canvas, um, a deck canvas, so it's pretty sturdy. It's very, um, <laughs> it's very thick and kind of stiff, uh, which will be really good for a good structured vest. I'm starting out with a body block that I have drafted for Patrick. It is basically uh, his exact measurements. It fits him quite well, so I'm going to start making some adjustments to it to get the shape that we want. So let's go ahead and do some pattern drafting. Okay, so I added some seam allowance to the front because it was previously cut on the fold as well as 3 eighths of an inch on one side to create an overlap so that the vest wasn't just, you know, thicker. The next thing I did was find the waistline and then create a diagonal cross so that it kind of dipped down on the front with like a sort of basque waist. Then I added seam allowance to the bottom of that. and seam allowance to the part that I cut off to create the skirt, because it's kind of a skirted vest. It's kind of a jerkin-ish thing. Then I added some paper so that I could extend that skirt part down, because I wanted it to be longer in the center front than on the sides. Then I curved that hem out. and cut off the extra paper. And then I added a little extra flare to the side of the front skirt. And then I actually removed a little from the center front so that it kind of had a swing opening. I have copied out my bodice front and then added, you know, the neck back in um, and taken it down the side um, and then taken basically shortened it for the back section um, because the front should always be you know, longer than the, the back. Hopefully not. this isn't by too much. It's It should only be about, I don't know, half an inch or so difference. And then I've also added a dart um, in the back because my husband has a little bit of a sway back. So I took out three quarters of an inch and then I'm actually turning this into a princess seam on the back because I don't want to deal with darts and I think it'll look better. So I'm going to cut this out and add the seam allowance back to this. Okay, so I have got a bunch more pieces than I did last time uh, I checked in. Um, I'll go through those really quick. So I've got my front piece here, and then I have the bottom section that attaches to that. So here I have my center back panel and my side back panel. Now um, I explained a little bit about how I was adding a dart, so I did that, separated it out, added my seam allowance, and then I needed a matching back bottom piece, so I literally just traced um, the front bottom piece and then made it a little bit narrower and squared it up with this seam because the back is um, straight across the back. It's not uh, it's not shaped the same way as the front. So this is just a little narrower because the back's a little narrower at that point. And then I am actually working on my collar piece right now. So what I did was I measured the, I found some instructions online and I'll post a link to that, um, but I measured this curve minus the shoulder seam allowance and then up to this point because this is the actual center front. And then this curve and then did the same thing with the shoulder seam because this is already on cut on the fold. So I measured both of those and then drew a straight line with a perpendicular line to it. This is the center back, so this is going to be on the fold. So this is actually where my shoulder seam should be. And then this is, this. the rest of this measure is um, up to the center front. 
and then I just took this up three quarters of an inch, gave it a curve uh, so that it follows the line of the uh, vest, and then added seam allowance to everything except for the center back. I haven't really talked about the embroidery portion of this yet, but I am thinking of having the embroidery actually start on the back of the collar and then wrap its way down to the center front, um, but we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and do a mock-up of all of the other pieces. So I'm gonna work on that. Um, I'm not gonna film the mock-up process just because it's probably gonna be basically the same as the actual vest sewing process and I don't wanna make you watch that twice. Okay, so I have the mock-up made. Um, it's got quite a list of adjustments that I have to make to it here. Um, so somehow when I made this, it ended up shrinking lengthwise, which is interesting. Um, so first things first, I need to adjust my pattern. I'm going to lower the armpit by an inch. I'm going to extend the center front an inch and a quarter on each side because I guess I wasn't taking into account the fact that it was going to be layered over a shirt. <laughs> um, and then I actually need to lengthen it. Um, I really like the angle of this line. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to preserve this angle. I'm just going to lengthen the entire thing all the way around by an inch and a half. I'm not adding any width to the back. After I've adjusted the front of this, I need to redraft the collar because this curve is gonna get messed up if I just tack on length. For the skirt pieces, um, the back one, I actually am going to add a little wedge to it because it's a little too straight. I think I need it to curve a little more to accommodate for uh, bottom room. <laughs> so I'm going to adjust the pattern and then the next time you see me, I'm actually going to be cutting out the actual fabric because I refuse to do a second mock-up for this. Actually, the next time you saw me was ironing. So, <laughs> joke's on me. And then I cut out my lining. and the main fabric. Okay, so I've got the embroidery designs um, charted out, actually that's the wrong side, uh, <laughs> for the collar piece and then for the front of the bodice. Um, what I need to do now is I need to get all of this into the computer so that I can mirror all of it. Um, I'm going to scan it into my computer and then I'm going to use a program to trace all of this, all of the important lines of this, because this is basically, I need these lines, these outer lines, so I can match up with the actual fabric pieces where the uh, embroidery is gonna go. And then what I'm gonna do, is print onto some of this. Um, it is a basically adhesive embroidery stabilizer stuff. This is what's gonna make it so that I can print and then attach it to my actual fabric. And then it's a wash away. So when I'm done, I'm just gonna remove as much as I can and then rinse the rest of it off. So I'm gonna start working on getting my patterns into the computer and I will show a little bit of that process. So I just loaded the images into my scanner, scanned them into my computer, and then opened everything up in Krita, Krita? I don't actually know how you say it. So it's a free open source drawing software that I really like to use. It is really fun and pretty easy to pick up. Uh, so I just traced all of the lines for the outside edge of the fabric, and then I traced all of the vines and leaves, and then mirrored it, flipped it, and printed it out. I have my print on stabilizer ready to go. I just need to attach it to the collar piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then start embroidering.
So the thread that I'm using for the embroidery is DMC's Diamant Grande, um, as well as their regular Diamant. I'm using two different colors, the Anthracite and then the Light Silver. So I used a stem stitch for the vines themselves. So I started with the Anthracite color, and then when I got to the junction at which uh, one of the threads was going to cross over the other because I was alternating which color was on top at each point where the vines crisscrossed, then I added the silver. So here you could just see me finishing up with the anthracite for this juncture point, and then switching to the light silver in the grande size, uh, which is like I think like six threads instead of three or something like that. And then just using that stem stitch to cross over onto the next part of the vine. And then here you can see me working on the leaves. Um, I did sort of a satin adjacent stitch. <laughs> Uh, where I basically would start at the very base of the leaf, go out towards the edges, and then come back in to the center. So that center line that I drew on was where everything met, and it ended up looking kind of like a herringbone stitch a little bit, um, but not exactly. And here's a closer view of that. And then I used a dark green satin embroidery thread that I had to put little lines in the center of each leaf. Just to give it a little bit of interest and also break up the metallics. And then once I finished all of that, the collar embroidery was done. I cut off all of the extra fabric that I left so that I could hoop the embroidery. And then I cut off all of the excess stabilizer that I could before I washed it out. Okay, so I have my collar piece embroidered, so I'm just going to attach my collar lining to the collar. Once I had the collar and the lining attached, I pinked the edges so that there was no extra, paying special attention to the corners. Okay, so I have the two collar pieces sewn together. I have the lining attached to the main. Um, I'm going to top stitch this because I am honestly really scared to get an iron in anywhere near the embroidery because it's basically all plastic. Once I had the color together, I attached the back lining pieces together and pressed them thoroughly. And then I attached the front to the back lining at the shoulders. And then I repeated the sewing of the back with the outer fabric. Once that was done, I attached the skirt lining to the outsides and then did about 12 more hours of embroidery. <laughs> this was for the front panels because I couldn't actually attach the fronts to anything until that was done. Well, it kind of took forever, but I got all of the embroidery done on the vest. Um, I think it turned out ridiculously good. So next up, I need to attach the back of the outer layer of vest to the um, front at the shoulders and then once that's done I'm going to base the collar on and then sandwich the collar between the outer layer of the vest and the lining. So I attached the shoulders and then basted the collar on. and then pinned the lining to the outer vest and sewed it. And 
And then once that was done, I pinked all of the edges that were at the top to remove bulk and also clipped my curves. And then I decided to top stitch the front of the vest because I didn't want it to bubble or warp or anything um, and I couldn't press it because of the embroidery. And then I attached the, the armholes. And then I pulled the th front panels through the shoulder so that I could turn it right side out, which was an experience, let me tell you. <laughs> Once that was done, I pinned my sides together and sewed them together. And then the last thing to do for the actual vest part was to add the skirt pieces to it. And then it was time to make some straps for the buckles. So my straps are four inches long and seven eighths of an inch wide. I rounded the corners and then I marked the center. And then I created a slot to put the prong through. I don't actually have a slot cutter so I had to do this with just a hole punch. And then I added some stitching holes. Next, I started on the part of the strap that goes through the buckle um, and is more of like kind of a belt kind of situation. I rounded the corners of that just the same as I did the buckle side. And then I made a mark an inch and a half in from the side and then every half inch I made another hole. And then I wet the leather and applied some Neat's foot oil to soften it and also to moisturize it. And then waited until that was soaked in. I then wetted the leather again and applied some black dye with a dauber. I put it on the fronts and the edges. I probably should have done the backs as well, just because there was a little bit of it that shows, but I do like how they turned out in the end. Then I buffed it out because I used EcoFlow water stain and they say to buff it after it has dried a bit. Then I burnished the edges and then I Put the prong of the buckle through the buckle side of the strap and stitched it up. And then I put more sewing holes in starting a quarter inch in from the edge in a little square formation. And I did the same thing on the non-buckle side of the strap. And the last thing left before the vest was done was to sew the buckles on. And then it was all ready to go. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I think that honestly it could not have grown better as far as the final product goes. Um, I will say that the amount of time I spent embroidering it was absolutely insane. I will not be doing filled in leaves on the uh, embroidery for my Renfrew bodice um, because I think that's what took most of the time, honestly. It took me at least like 
12 hours to get this done. Um, it might have been more. I honestly don't know. But here it is. Um, I think that it turned out absolutely gorgeous. It's definitely a garment. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed the uh, the journey that I went on to make this, and I cannot wait to make more items for both of our costumes. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like because that actually helps me out a lot. If you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. I try to post every other Sunday. Sometimes that doesn't quite happen because uh, real life gets in the way. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to be doing more Ren Faire, fantasy, and vintage sewing and crafting in the near future. So stick around. Bye.